the fiber I'm working with here is a little bit of a mess. It's one of the first few fleeces that I washed and it got a little bit jumbled up because of the way I shoved it in the pot. <laughs> so um, now when I'm washing my fleece, I really like to try to keep all of the tips lined up and really squish it down nice and flat so that the cut edge um, is kind of aligned along one side of the pan that I'll heat my water up on. So what I do is I find a lock and I just try to get the ends that were cut nice and flat in a row. Um, when I get little bits like this, I just toss it um, to the floor or onto my shelf here. Now I'm gonna line the end cut right onto the comb, as little fiber along the back side as possible. And I do a nice little flat row. And then I will um, fan it out. Now one thing that I don't do with most fleeces, um, but I will do for natural colored fleeces if I want a more flat color, less tweedy of a fiber, I will cut these little bleached tips off. And that is for two reasons. One, it's a color management technique. So I have a more consistent yarn. Um, it can turn out a little variegated if you don't do that. Um, and the other is that those ends can be what we call tippy. And that's when the tips are kind of crusty and matted because of, um, it could be anything. It could just be wear and tear. It could be um, just damage from dirt and debris. A lot of the times it's because the animal was coated and it wore a coat to keep the fleece clean, but that tends to mat the fleece down at the tips. So we'll do that once again. I have is a little bit bigger of a bit here. Sometimes you find little second cuts. You want to always pick out the little cut bits that find their way into the packaged fleece. Those you'll find often right along the cut edge of the fiber. And then I like to kind of flatten it out and then line the tips up, just catching the tips of the cut side along the comb. Now having to cut the ends off like this does minimize the staple length. So if I were purchasing a fleece that is colored and I intended to clip the tips off like this, it is something I try to avoid by the way because it is a huge time sink. I, I really just, I'm just trying to save this bit of wool from going into the garden. Um, but if I were to choose a fleece and I noticed that might be necessary, I would make sure that it is one of a long staple. This is the shortest length staple I would ever choose to use this method. And I'm trying not to be too um, careful with everything, but we'll keep moving on. You can see there's a lot of variation in this natural fleece. I'm gonna to try to start separating out the shorter, darker bits. With natural color fleeces, the darker bits of the animal's fleece are generally lower on the body where the growth is a little shorter, um, or it's just a different um, texture slightly. It's a little bit more coarse and so I try not to blend it with other parts that are different in their nature. This is kind of like the last bits of a fleece that I started processing a very long time ago and never finished. Just trying to wrap that up. Yeah, it looks like I've picked through a lot of this fleece already. This is just the last of it and there's a lot of those dark pieces. See how much longer this bit of wool is. Now you can see that I didn't wash this very well and there's parts of it that are a little stuck together. This side looks like it got rinsed out well um, but this looks like it was a little bit trapped so 
I'm gonna put the nicer, cleaner parts on the combs first. But look at the difference in the staple. So you can see there's some variation among an entire fleece just within it. There can be short parts, long parts. Let me know in a comment below if you spin from a fleece, um, if there's any excellent resources out there for buying fleeces online. I know that this pandemic has made a lot of people go virtual, but the only virtual sales I've seen of fleeces were on Facebook. And I've not delved into that world of shopping before. So I hesitated to um, stay in touch with that method of purchasing. So I have filled up my comb. It's about half full. Stretch it out a little bit. And I'm gonna start flicking up and pulling back. You want to make sure that when you're pulling back towards yourself, you're never pointing these tines towards your face. You want to always be pointing them away from your face while pulling the comb towards you. I habitually use my left side hand to gently press the fiber down. Because mine are hooked to this small rickety table, I also press the back of my left hand against the combs as I pull. Sometimes you get a little bit of static. I always try to straighten that out so that the tips don't get mixed up. You want to keep the fiber in a single direction. Occasionally, I switch it up with the direction I am combing. Again, always turning those tines away from the face. So I've been able to comb off quite a bit. There's still more left, but the more I comb, the less I grab. So what I decide to do is just start to draft this fiber straight off the first pass. So I'm going to gently twist and pull and twist and pull and twist. And once I get to about here is when I notice that there's little neps or noils in the fiber. So I'm just going to sacrifice that last bit where they're mixed in and I'm going to pick out the few that I find. Okay, so this is going to be what we call seconds or waste. Um, sometimes on the first pass it's so dirty that you don't really want to keep it. Um, this is quite clean, but it is a little bit knotty and there is some debris, so I'm just going to set that aside. And that is great wool to throw into your compost pile or um, to put in your raised beds to prevent slugs. Um, and then what I'll do here, I'm just going to pull this back so my basket's not in the way. I'm going to gently, once again, with the very tip, place this fiber on here. And because it's that natural color, I'm just stretching it out and blending it a little bit extra. Now I try not to touch my fiber too much, so the fewer passes, um, the easier time I have. Now with my comb, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just gently push the tips on there and pull back. And I'll turn the comb as I work to kind of pull from all sides. Now I'm just doing a little demo for you, so I'm only 
working this fiber onto one half of my, um, what do we call this? It's basically a long extra comb um, that allows you to blend fibers across wider rows. So it just minimizes the variegation of the fiber. Of course, the more times you comb back and forth and back and forth, the more blended it'll be. So I do end up with a little bit of striping, I would say, in these natural tones where it's mostly just gray and brown. But because I clipped the tips, if I hadn't, it would be kind of a blend of gray and brown and blonde. So it would be like a little extra variegated because I'm not blending it intensely. So I'm once again nearing the end of this comb and again I will just combine the ends, draft what I can, and then place it on those tines. At this point, I'll just pick out little bits of hay or little noils I find. That's when the fiber is kind of all mixed up on itself in a little, little loose knot. And I'm going to pinch and wiggle and pinch and wiggle, alternating with pinch and pull. <laughs> and I'm just drafting this fiber off the comb. Right. So I sometimes when I overdraft it like this, I'll kind of tug at the loose bits and stack them together and draft them out just a little extra so that they're not kind of jumbled like that. I'm blending them back together into a bit of roving. can be a dirty job, so um, totally worth wearing an apron or a pair of pants that you don't mind get quite dirty, depending on the fleece. Um, this one, again, is exceptionally clean. And then I'm just going to gently wrap it around my hand. And there's a little nest of fiber. If you made it to the end of the video, please give this one a thumbs up. It helps me so much in growing my channel. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. When you hit the bell, you'll get notifications for when I have new uploads. If you want to find me on social media, you can reach me at Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, or Twitter. And I hope you have a wonderful day and you take care.